Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Today we have the Seaside and Beyond versus the Seaside and Go Make Your Own. <laughs> so, just I just pulled them both out for comparison. It's quite funny to say I'd, I'd never uh, I'd never measured up, checked out, or anything on the Seaside and Beyond. Though when I set out to make this, I kind of wanted a similar board. So it's like it's pretty funny. I mean, the, I'm just looking at them both. The Seaside and Beyonds got a little bit more rocker. It's a little bit more refined in the tail. I think the uh, the concaves are a little bit deeper. The, the rails themselves possibly a little more refined in the edge of the rail and then the deck itself's a little bit fuller but I just thought it was funny to put them together and just see uh, just see how close they, they are. I can't I probably won't be able to hold them up next to or in front of each other but you can always pause and go back so that's uh, that's my one and uh, and then we'll get the real one out so I'll just plop my little plop my little beauty over in the corner here the uh the beyond pulls in a little bit more in the tail as well uh so anyway here we are the seaside and beyond the famous one uh like I say, I'd made that one and uh, I don't know why, but I just, I kind of got it into my head that I really wanted to, I've been eyeing up one of these for ages and I was like, maybe I should just try the the actual, the actual real deal because uh, I was originally eyeing up the 7.0, but the 7.0, I was like 45 litres, I mean, it's fine, but like 45 litres, I'm cramming sort of, it's a lot of volume, I cram, I can cram 42 to 45 in a groveler. Uh, and I know middle lengths are nice to be uh, refined and all the rest of it, but at the end of the day, I'm usually picking a mid length to catch more waves, or I like to take a mid length out when it's like it's not really short boardable and it's not really, uh, it's I don't really want a long board, but it's not really powerful enough to short board. Uh, although this is going to do everything, I think. So anyway, yeah. So this one is one of the new free ones. So there's uh, if you look at some of the other guys' reviews, there's. Uh, there was two two lots of them that came out basically the original ones were the lft and they came in three different sizes i think it's six eight seven oh and seven two or maybe seven four and then they brought these timber tech ones out in like seven ten seven two and i think a bigger one but these are chunkier per per length basically so this is the 70's got 45 litres in it this one's two inches short and it's got 47 and a half litres in it so as I keep saying if you're short and fat like me you ride your boards a bit shorter and fatter because it just it means I've got less I don't have to get as far up over the front to be able to duck dive it and stuff like once that volume is a bit closer to me it's a lot easier to push it under the water and uh, a little bit shorter rail length just keeps it manoeuvrable so yeah this is a timber tech one it's 610 21 and a quarter and two and seven eighths so it's a tiny bit narrower than mine as well pulls in a bit more in the tail uh, a bit like the seaside they're quite refined in these tips of the tail and uh, there's a little bit more concave going on I'd say this is almost fuller in volume in general and it's definitely lighter than my glass job which is not surprising so yeah so we got a you know nice rocker on it it's a little bit more rocker on this you can see they've kept the beaky volume up in the nose and then they sort of thin the tail out quite nicely uh it's a really nice outline shape like i say the weight's good i, I the timber tech's a little bit stiffer but it's also a little bit heavier than the lft uh it's not got the same flex so possibly not quite as poppy and zingy and lively but it will have more momentum and they don't bounce on chop like some eps's do because they've got that extra weight in the wood uh generally pretty durable as well they're very strong in the decks like you don't put heel dints or anything you just got to be very careful not to end up with damage that you don't repair or sand outs if they've not been made super well but i have noticed that the fire wires that are in the shops now and the later batches are actually looking better made than the old ones the the old lfts from a long time ago and some of the timber techs you'd sort of see you'd see a few sand outs and stuff in them these ones look like they've just done something a bit more a bit extra or a bit nicer with the finishing process so quite happy with this unfortunately this one got a tiny little chip on the tail but i know a guy who works with epoxy so i think i'll be all right uh <clears throat> so yeah and then you know it's got that signature long really long it's basically it's almost like a, a long double but it's it's kind of a i think it's kind of a single with a double inside it 
and then double and V off the tail, but I'll come around and show you the uh, the concaves shortly as well. So yeah, just was keen to get a try of what that actual, you know, real deal product was like, because I really like the Seaside. It's one of my favorite boards. So it makes sense to grab a Seaside and beyond. And like I say, when the seeing this 610, it just fell into my dimension zone perfectly. And I was like, yeah, okay, it's a little bit narrower in the mine, a little bit thinner in the tail, a little bit more rocker. It's a volume that I like. It's going to be a little bit lighter and a little bit more whippy. So uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about the board. I mean, I want to, I want to, I wanted to do a quick video of it now before I wax it up or anything. And then uh, I want to ride it a good bit to, to be able to do it justice because I'm in my mind, this board should go in like anything from, I guess I'm probably going to ride it from like chest high to decently overhead, I would have thought. Uh, so I just want to be able to give really good feedback on what it rides like, because there's a lot of stuff out, there's a lot of reviews out there already, uh, and you've probably seen over the shape a million times now. So yeah, as I say, these ones in the timber tech, definitely carrying a bit more thickness and chunk through the deck. Uh, it's a pretty chunky rail, it's chunky up in the nose, and then it fins out nicely in the tail. You've got those concaves, which are really nice, and this real narrowing down in the tip of the tail. Uh, the rock is really nice. Everything's just very, very, very middle of the road and very flowy. So these uh, these Timber Tech boards always look really nice. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't really need to say masses about the board itself until I actually do the ride review. But basically, it's a uh, it's gonna have some. It's gonna be more like a mid length paddle. It's gonna have some good glide. I'm pretty sure they're still responsive. Uh, you know, it was designed to be a stretch version of the seaside. So uh, yeah, I really wanted to try the real deal. So here we go. I'll uh, come and show you through the concaves and I'll just talk a little bit about the, the fin sets that I would recommend and I would try. Uh, obviously it's gonna be the Machados and my all time favorites, the uh, the controller. So the split keel and FCS, the controller in futures, the, they're very similar feel and similar design. And then the Machado fins, the Machado fins could go good in this. I found the Machado fins a little bit unpredictable and can be a bit skatey in the seaside. So I use the controllers, but uh, I think with this longer rail length and a bigger board, I think the Machados could be doing a nice job of loosening the back end up. Uh, so yeah, I'll come and show you the concaves and talk about fins a little bit. So here we go, getting into the engine room of the seaside and beyond. As you'll see, it's basically uh, right, right up at the nose here and the concave starting the minute the rocker breaks, same, same kind of way as I do it. Uh, we've got a single concave up here at the front and then you'll see probably here, this is um, about a third, third of the way from the nose. You can see we're kind of already we're already starting to make a double there. So there we go, and double concave, that double concave will get more and more aggressive as we go through the back and into the fins. Uh, and you can see there's still a single running inside it. So that's basically single with double inside it. And then uh, all the way until we're behind the fins. And we've still got lots of double there. You might just see, so there's just a wee chip on the tail that it picked up on transit on the way down, unfortunately. And tiny, tiny bit of V as we exit those tail tips. It's basically like V, there we go, almost flat. So V from behind the rear quads. And then as we come forward, that V turns into double. So it's double all the way through the fins, that's the deepest point of the double. And then basically it's a, it's pretty much a single with a double or yeah, single inside double or double inside a single is probably the better way of saying it all the way up front. And as you can see, it's, it's quite aggressive. So just run through that again. So you can see pretty much single concave all the way through here and double, double as well, all the way from forward of halfway, almost up towards the nose end and uh, super deep. So that's all volume coming out of the tail and it's all there uh, and it's all going to add to the grip and responsiveness basically and the speed generation and then uh we're not going into any v until we're actually behind the rear quad fins so yeah quite an interesting bottom definitely definitely my kind of concave i really like it that's kind of i kind of try and do similar on my boards especially mid lengths i like the double to start 
quite a long way up. Uh, mine generally not as aggressive as this, but you know, you can really see the principles on that. Uh, and you can see how the, you can see how the concaves will definitely give you a nice flatter rocker going through the, the spine of the board or what would normally be the stringer and then it allows the rails to, to, to fold away as you get to the as you get to the end with that V uh, to give you a bit more performance off the tail so yeah really clever board can't wait to surf it uh, kind of stoked I got it actually it's a lot more expensive probably I mean these cost me a lot to make but it's probably uh, this is probably twice as expensive as what it cost me to make the board although <laughs> if I counted my time this is probably half the price if I was actually if I was paying myself ten dollars an hour I'd, this would probably cost me half the price of making those so So like I say, for the Seaside and Beyond, my two fins of choice are going to be one, this Machado Seaside Quad. Uh, again, this is another, it's pretty much a split keel design. You know, the intention is to take a, take a big long keel fin and split it up into two parts and let some water flow in between and don't have it all quite so forward orientated. It just creates a bit more balanced uh, feel to a board than a 20, I think, personally. A lot of people love 20s, but I'm not a great surfer, so I find it hard to surf sometimes. So yeah, that'll be one to try. Uh, like I say, I find them, they can be a little bit unpredictable in the seaside, and sometimes they'll grip and drive, and sometimes they'll be a bit slippery, whereas the split keels or the controllers are, are very sure-footed and a bit more drive. Uh, this could work really well in the seaside and beyond, because it's like, that's got enough rail length where you'll probably want to loosen it up a bit and like i say if it was a bit bigger or wasn't sure or i just wanted to stick a go-to fin in that i know is going to work straight away these controller design again it's another it's another split keel version so take a you basically take a keel design and split it up uh and uh yeah i know these go really well in in most stuff and you could always just use your regular performance fin if you want to do as well you could probably stick keels in it as well again you know me i'm a big proponent of if you're going to use keels put them in the right place but it's, it's long enough rail line so you might be all right uh so yeah those are my go-to fin setups and uh yeah thanks for watching i'll i'll do some i'll do a decent amount of riding of the board and then uh i'll come back with some proper feedback and what conditions i can ride it in and what waves it suits and uh you know how the volume is how it paddles how it duck dives how you can turn it and all the rest of it uh thanks for watching guys catch you soon